have the an easy task to wrap it up and again as I said reiterate our themes the questions we raised some uh, disciplinary theoretical propositions and alternative suggestions we offered um, and some what appear to me persistent problems that we face in Balkan studies. Before, however, we, we proceed with that, I want to again tell you, as you already know, we indicated early on in our call for uh, papers that our second objective, equally important, is uh, to put all our papers and our discussion this couple of days to, to offer it to a wider audience. So it doesn't uh, stay here between us and we are not the only one who hopefully benefits from, from this, but uh, our uh, intention is to publish a volume which could uh, reach w wider readership and hopefully be used in uh, course textbooks since we all on one level on another complain that they are not good enough <laughs> sources that we can use in our courses. So that was our second uh, objective. And uh, Theodore and I need to sit down, come up with a framework for this volume and uh, a timetable. But at this stage, we would like to tell you that by the end of October, we'll uh, um, approach you uh, requesting your papers. Of course, some of you are already working on them, might have other uh, plans for publications of these papers, and of course it is up to you. Uh, you also uh, welcome, as you know, in our, um, in academia to publish it in a journal and then still consider it for a volume if you are in a hurry to get this out first. Uh, we will uh, try to be expedient, but sometimes it's unpredictable how the search for a publisher will go and of course we want to say that we will be targeting only academic presses either university presses or independent academic presses mm -hmm. so by the end of, uh, of October you'll hear from us um, requesting your papers and offering you some kind of again either framework some instructions maybe some requests for um, tinkering the paper if it has to fall into our framework to create a, a coherent volume. So with that being said, I want to outline some of our, as I said, themes, topics, but more importantly to me, some questions that we, we raised. Um, we have been all here following, and I don't need to repeat everything, but we tried with the way we designed the conference and the program is a good illustration of, of our idea and design to cover comparatively Bosnia and Bulgaria, but first to offer the uh, Ottoman history perspective, the Ottoman legacy, and then uh, go through some uh, historical analysis of either outlining a, a century-long development of Bosnian national identity uh, or focusing on concrete cases of nation building and national identity as was the Edin's case or Max's case, um, Theodora and yeah, Irina in these countries. We also offered some examples of cultural productions or uh, cultural products language or film or dance and, and um, music <coughs> as material for either uh, manipulation and, and use by national agents and politicians or as reflection of, uh, again, agency and counter space for counter um, discourses. We also involved uh, other disciplines, not only c cultural, linguistics, uh, film studies, but also political science here, um, and we heard very interesting papers on the relationship between state and, and na nationalism or nation building and state agencies or local agencies 
as was the case of, of Paula um, and their interactions for the construction of, of the nation and nationhood. What emerged, however, through this, to me, through these papers, were some proposals in the state, the, the articulation of problems within the disciplines, be it history or anthropology or, or political science, and proposals of, of uh, uh, alternative approaches. For instance, we heard um, in Edin and um, EPEC and their suggestion in one case to go beyond the state and this is the state as unifying agent and to look into local uh, agency in the analysis of community violence. Um, and the same was also, uh, not the same, but similar based on local cases was uh, Max's approach and proposition to study just conflicts, local conflicts, which receive some coloring of national identity and national uh, belonging. And what would be the appropriate framework to study that? Um, Edin asked the bigger question of who is our recipient? Why do we create histories and history textbooks and how can they can be useful or can they be useful to begin with or we are just writing them for ourselves? Mm, we also saw parallel conclusions or similar conclusions emerging from different disciplines. I was struck by um, Bob's mapping out or outlining the, the national identity of, of um, Bosnia and how it was focused on victimhood and genocide. And at the same time, we heard um, Jelena from a political uh, scientist perspective a very similar conclusion and similar uh, situation happening in, in, to a different degree, of course, but similar in structure situation of creating narratives of victimhood in Serbia and Croatia. Um, the other uh, problems of disciplines that we encountered, uh, Christine raised one about the metapolitics of disciplines, whether it is history or anthropology and how we, we deal with, with those situations as scholars trapped into those metapolitics one way or another. And here what emerged to me was actually a bigger problem that we all acknowledge it exists and I still maybe um, here I would seek your either reiteration of your thoughts or, or stating them again. I see us trapped in some kind of dynamics between the West and the Balkans. And as much as we all try to avoid the Western framework of thought and approach and we acknowledge it as a different type of approach, we nonetheless use it as a starting point. Um, and of course, Nikolai also outlined the dynamic between the Western and uh, the national uh, historiographies and how that is a different type of problem. But I am talking here about the framework that we're all coming from our, our backgrounds. We are all coming from somewhere. Nobody is coming from nowhere. And that somewhere is our Western, more or less, education. And as much as we know the local <coughs> disciplines and the local scholarship, nonetheless, we are trapped in that dynamic. Uh, and the other problem that I saw emerge here is our desire, almost all of us here, to normalize Balkan studies to go beyond the primordialism, beyond victimhood, to seek counter uh, discursive practices and to point them out or to uh, talk about peaceful coexistence rather than the ethnic violence. When discussing ethnic, I mean, communal violence to seek the very idea of the local uh, processes when priests have to order their own communities not to relate to the others and all that. And again, it's important how you interpret that and look at those uh, actions and events. And for some, the, the glass can be always half empty and for other half full, just to, to simplify. And for I 
have been working on gender uh, problems in the Balkans and for years, the last 15 years, feminist, Western feminist scholarship has focused on the victimization of, of Balkan women. And my approach is it's about time to give them agency because um, they do have it. But we are still trapped into that. We are trying to normalize. We are calling attention to their suffering and the pain and trying not to perpetuate it. But where is the line and how can we uh, really do that in a um, uh, balanced manner? And my last question here, and I will stop and actually ask you to um, share your thoughts without pushing you or forcing you at the end of this uh, exhausting experience, but exciting. <laughs> I am exhausted. I don't know you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, who are our readers? I mean, how are we engaging into with the the national uh, national scholars in our disciplines? Do we reach to them enough, or do we have to? How engaged are we with bridging and creating dialogue with national? scholarship in whatever area, be it anthropology or cultural studies or film studies or history or um, or we continue to exist in those because there are sentiments that we do not, especially Western based scholars do not reach out um, to local um, local scholars, national scholars and I will stop here and I will uh, stop with my excitement <laughs> about uh, and gratitude to uh, you all for coming yeah. and and I s the discourse uh, um, that another part of this discourse w which I saw was that uh, there was sort of the the, int the mainstream was saying let's not engage with this guy let's just pretend he doesn't exist because if you're if you're uh, engaging with him then you're legitimizing him. Uh, and I, which is what motivated me to think, well, is it really that dangerous or <laughs> is it um, somewhat uh, normal from a Western perspective to have a small uh, far right uh, mm -hmm. party? So, so, I, so I think it's important to, to I, I do think it's very important to engage with. And I hope that when we publish this, we can make this volume accessible to the local uh, publics. There is actually very concretely, um, there is a um, uh, Capital, uh, mm -hmm. the newspaper, mm -hmm. one uh, approached me uh, uh, a year or so ago and they wanted to have a regular column, I don't know if others uh, were approached about this, a regular column on uh, within the uh, newspaper on uh, sort of Western analysis of Bulgarian uh, events for for the Bulgarian audience. So if, uh, um, I don't know if they ever made this happen, actually. Um, I just expressed uh, interest in general, but <laughs> never really followed up, and they didn't either. Um, but uh, that would be one way to share findings through, because they have some high quality analysis, I think. Part of that, and that is engaging on this side of the, of the pond. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Victor has been a consultant to so many people, it's uh, probably not even possible to make a list at this point. But uh, uh, and for that matter, we engage with students all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have found in my ten years of engaging with the with the, the army, uh, people getting ready to go over there, I, I started discovered a whole new world of what they want, what they want from us in mm -hmm. a sense as academics, mm -hmm. because their frames of reference are so totally different, and it's important mm -hmm. for me or whoever mm -hmm. goes in there to understand their frame, frames of reference and understand the kinds of things that will be meaningful to them in making the presentation. I, I wish there were some ways that we could, you know, promote that more effectively from within the academy. I think it's pretty hard to, mm -hmm. to do it, but uh, 
when the opportunity comes along, I think we all have to be ready to do that. I would also include in that, by the way, uh, work for the uh, various criminal tribunals or local mm -hmm. jurisprudence, mm -hmm. um, which are always in need, for some reason, of what we do. One is uh, the issue of identity, because uh, uh, if we're talking about engaging with um, uh, academics and perhaps also opinion makers, journalists uh, um, in, in the region, uh, one has to acknowledge uh, to them, uh, obviously as, as academics uh, we do so uh, ourselves uh, as a matter of course, but acknowledge to them uh, uh, the, the, the existence and, and, and the sort of structured and, and, and sometimes very long standing nature of these identities which may not necessarily make a lot of sense because as uh, one of uh, our colleagues pointed out, for example with Kosovo, um, uh, she said, that if memory serves, that uh, uh, the um, uh, Kosovo is, 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 is an economic burden and a um, uh, sort of institutional obstacle to the uh, accession of Serbia into the European Union. So why, why bother? And then, of course, uh, well, why does the Serbs bother? And, of course, there's an important reason. That is because uh, it is part of uh, an uh, identity um, a, a national narrative which has been assimilated by many people. Uh, we, one can argue about uh, the uh, factual uh, um, accuracy of, 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 of the various sort of topoi that go into this uh, uh, national uh, narrative, uh, but I mean, it's there. And, and after all, we are expected, not only as academics, but as, as uh, good citizens, to respect people's sort of sense of self and identity. So that's uh, uh, something that uh, uh, I think we, 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 you know, we, we should bear in mind. And, and the, I mean, the other point is that um, we, uh, and this word I think again, like identity was not, was perhaps surprisingly not very present in our discussions, globalization. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, globalization, which is, as I always tell my students, not a natural process, mm -hmm. it's a uh, uh, institutionally driven process. There are leaders and movements and uh, all kinds of groups uh, uh, with their own agendas uh, who propel that process forward and it has uh, good outcomes and bad outcomes as we all know empirically from looking at our bank accounts apart from anything else. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I find that globalization creates and, and some of the points that were made in the uh, papers that we heard today uh, to confirm this I think is that it doesn't just create a borderless world um, a world uh, where barriers of various kinds are being dismantled. It also actually also institutes borders. It results in new uh, um, uh, yeah, yeah, new lines of division. And, and that occurred to me when, when I was listening to, to, to Paul's paper about uh, uh, specifically um, Bosnia, because of course there were local reasons, uh, very valid reasons, uh, why uh, this uh, highly intricate uh, uh, system of cantons and, and local government uh, and, and various levels of uh, uh, federated representation had to be instituted. Uh, but it, it arguably, uh, and of course driven by um, the European Union, NATO, and the United Nations and sort of general kind of international consensus. Uh, uh, but it did, I think, um, segment and, and, and uh, confirm, uh, uh, the uh, reconfirm uh, the, the uh, uh, separate uh, and uh, you know, identities and separate lives of, of, of these people. So I, I think we should bear that in mind because uh, it is a very complex issue. Glo globalization is perhaps neither good nor, nor bad. You know, thinking makes it so to paraphrase uh, of, uh, Shakespeare. So anyway, that's my... There's this issue of, of trying to normalize the Balkans. And, and you specifically use the word traps. Are, are we... You see us... <laughs> You pose it as a kind of a statement and as a question. Uh, trapped in trying to, to normalize the Balkans. This came out explicitly uh, in the discussion after my paper mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, it reminded me as well, just when you're talking now, um, I was hired as a professor only a few months ago. I'm just starting my academic career now. I defended my doctoral thesis last fall. And I remember when I got the report from my external examiner, mm -hmm. uh, there was a, there was a, uh, a sentence that said something like, you know, I, my thesis, the first half of it is a very detailed reconstruction of local violence. It shows that it's very contingent uh, and, and so, uh, and driven very much by local dynamics. Um, so one of the sentences by the external examiner was something like, 
you know, he definitively lays to rest the thesis of ancient ethnic hatred. And, and I remember reading this and thinking, wow, I actually hadn't thought about that when I was writing, uh, that I was out to sort of slay this dragon. And, and, and in so doing, I've normalized somehow doing, you know, and that I, I almost sort of feel like it overtakes my work sometimes. And just like when it came out yesterday, this, the, the, the attempt to try and make sense of these documents on these incidents and my, my thinking about them and trying to understand how that leads people to create hard boundaries amongst each other. I actually wasn't thinking as I was writing that article that this, one of the objectives I can maybe accomplish is to normalize this area, but yet the field still has this, this kind of baggage on, on it. Uh, and I'm not sure what else to say about it except to say mm -hmm. I've had this happen to me now mm -hmm. several times where I, I, I see that my work for some people seems to do this and yet it's not anything that I, I, I when I'm actually working that I feel conscious that I'm doing. Um, and so I'm not sure if I should actually make it explicit in my work because maybe people want to see more explicitly mm -hmm. that, that this is something, an objective I'm out mm -hmm. to accomplish. Mm -hmm. uh, or should I just ignore it and pretend like I'm writing about France <laughs> where, where we don't have to <laughs> talk about these kinds of things. So anyway, I, I think it's a really important issue to put out and talk about. And I, the other thing I want to say uh, a few words about is just this business of uh, who are our readers and, and reaching out to a wider readership. I fully agree with what Bob was talking about. Um, uh, many of the issues, particularly getting involved outside the academy, uh, when there's, there's issues of, of very serious political importance for the regions that we study. Um, and also, I think, uh, I think I, I've, I've seen, I, I've had very uh, depressing advice from some of more senior people I've worked with about, for example, publishing in the languages of the area that I do my work on. Some of my first, pu my, my two fr uh, articles that I first published were in, first one was in, in Bosnia and the second one was in Serbia. In Bosnia and the second one was in Serbia. And I remember coming back, I was so proud of doing this. This was my, these are my first publications. I translated the first one myself. I was ecstatic about doing this. One of the members of my committee said to me, that's great, for your career this means nothing. Just so you know. Just, it means like less than nothing. You're, in a sense, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. This was depressing to me and yet, when I was in Bosnia, struggling to get access to the information that actually made my thesis mm -hmm. possible, the, what I found out later, one of the key moments that took place was when I was in the archive of Bosnia-Herzegovina. I came in one day and one of the archivists was reading a collection of essays that the Institute for History had published and one of my essays was in there. And she told me later, after we had worked together for months and I got access to information, she said, when I saw that essay, I realized you weren't a spy. <laughs> And that, and that it actually made the research possible. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the engagement with that kind of readership is, you know, even from a selfish perspective, it's, it's of crucial importance, mm -hmm. but obviously it's, it's, it, it's of, of greater importance for other reasons uh, than, than um, simply, you know, letting, uh, disseminating scholarship to a wider audience, obviously, um, and also not, not selfishly keeping that information for a small readership here. I mean, it's, it's that area that where people are most interested in the stuff I'm working on. It has a much greater significance than whether it moves the field of nationalism studies forward or not. That means nothing to people. You know? They're interested to see these stories actually written about mm -hmm. and recorded and researched mm -hmm. in an attempt to try to actually understand what happened. These, this has a much greater significance. So I, I think that's an important issue as well. That's probably, I mean, my book just appeared in April, so I haven't had the chance to hear that many things about it. <laughs> But um, my colleagues had to read it recently. And I think that the greatest probably compliment I would get for this book, I had a colleague who works in, on US history. He has nothing to do with the region. He probably didn't know where exactly Bulgaria was situated before I arrived in the department. And I mean, you know, I don't mean to be condescending. I mean, but you know, it, it's basically a person who has never showed any interest in the area. So, he approached me once in the, in, just we ran into each other and he told me, you know what, after I read your book, I'm never going to use the term balkanization ever again. <laughs> and to me that was just like, wow, that, that's just wonderful. That being said, is this sort of like the new orthodoxy that we're going to be normalizing? <laughs> and is this like becoming a banal thing? Are we not done with Balkan ghosts? Mm. I mean, that was like 15 years ago. So, I mean, do we need to be going back to the whole, my work normalizes Balkan history because we are trapped in this rhetoric of exceptionalism? 
because we're being defensive by doing so. We are acknowledging that what we study is different, but we're going to normalize it. So it's this vicious circle that we know we have to sort of like do both, but we have to do it in a subtle way. Um, and I, I don't know how, uh, but I just sort of like wanted to put this on the table. I think it's, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> and I think we need to unfortunately keep saying it until they hear it, so. So we have to be activists as well? No, not activists, but you know, it maybe like instead of uh, publishing and you know aiming for a publication in the Slavic Review, you know, send something to comparative studies, or also you know look at what other people in other fields are saying, so we can get into a dialogue with them. You know, not not say that in arts. Um, <laughs> We actually, uh, which actually, of course, as you can see, uh, um, with an organization of, of Boston and perhaps the women living in America in working in academia, uh, once a year we go to different places in Bosnia and organize workshops and so on. Uh, this time we are going for the first time to Republika Srpska, and uh, Bani Luka is very enthusiastic about it. We received a couple of letters already from philosophy faculty and of course the topics don't have to by any extension have to be about Bosnia but uh, everything that was presented here would be I'm sure very interesting to also present in a different uh, academic environment and see how how we communicate uh, and so uh, if Jana would allow me to use the email list of this uh, of this conference I'd like to really invite everybody in terms of that, just look at the other identities that people in the region have. So they're not national or religious, and and really, and I think a lot of the papers here today uh, touched on that. That you know, we tend to think of the region as very ethnic and very nationalized and very very much driven by ident you know these these group identities. But in reality, I think a lot of other interests are are defining. You know, sort of. I mean, economic interests, uh, travel interests, uh, you know, just uh, I information, the desire to have contact to, to other sources of information. So, I mean, I think we can, another theme I think we can really look for is sort of how, for, I mean, from the very, be I mean, from the very beginning, from the Ottoman period that we've heard about, to the very end, sort of your paper, but also um, Donald Buchanan's paper <coughs> yesterday, is that you have these, Multiplicity uh, of multiplicities of identities um, that not of, that are not always national or that combine various elements and they're actually very complex. And I think this is where we can. I'm not I'm, honestly. I'm not interested in normalizing the Balkans because for most of the most of the, the Americans don't even know where the Balkans are. So it's kind of trying to normalize something they don't know what it is. It's you know, it, for me, it's a pointless process. But the human stories that we can tell are really amazing because one of the things that really makes the Balkans special is that you do have these complex interactions of groups and ethnicities and religions and social groups and East and West coming together and, and groups mixing and mixing. And I think the, the human element of how you actually navigate this complex environment and as you said, Max, you know, Bosnia is a dysfunctioning society, I mean, a country, but people are happy. And I think ultimately this is, I mean, all Sometimes. of us, well, <laughs> yes, but if, I think a lot of people who are not from the region and go to, to Eastern Europe, they actually embark on that vitality that is counterintuitive. Because you think, oh, you live in misery, constant war, this and that, you know, 100 years of violence, Ottoman Empire, this empire, this, and yet people remain vital and cynical and humorous and funny and go on with their lives. And I think this is the story we also need to tell. And I think one of the appeal of your books is that you do tell the, the human stories. And you know, and the human stories of violence, the human stories of communism, the human stories of conversion. And this is what makes our history really interesting. And I think we should keep track of the human stories in the end. So scholars in the region, bridge to other disciplines. But there's also this, this work that can be done about focusing on the common humanity, yeah. right, which is, is so often lost. I mean I, I mean, I come from a discipline where that's the focus, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that um, sometimes 
what I found so fascinating about your paper, the stories of you know how these drunk, they're drunk men. Drunk men fight. You know, <laughs> it's just a, it's a reality of, of sort of masculine bravado and it and the way that it then gets mapped into these larger ethnic and national stereotypes and prejudices. But by telling the story, I mean I could imagine a way in which you tell the story of these two men who get drunk and, you know, for a variety of reasons, maybe having to do with a girl, maybe having to do with a vet, maybe having to do with somebody's lost cow or whatever. Goats. Goats, right? <laughs> the fight ensues and, and in the telling of that story, you're actually undermining yeah. the stereotype. Yeah. Right? If you tell it well and if you tell it carefully, I think that that's something that we as scholars can really pay attention to are the micro ways in which people still fall in love, they get married, they have babies, whether it's communism or war or post-war or reconstruction or whatever. We got to, I mean, I got to get up in the morning and get my daughter out the door to school, you know, mm -hmm. and it's in the regular rhythms of life, of daily life that, that I think whether you're in the Balkans or in France <laughs> or wherever, that, that common humanity is something as scholars we've kind of lost the ability to talk about. And I find that as a real, maybe that's, you know, like, dare I say, maybe kind of Marxist, but um, I think it's something that we should really pay attention to. Engaging, but I do think we, we're constantly trying to balance all of these contradictions, right? The, 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 the demands that we have upon us from our own disciplines about um, what, what is good scholarship and good quality work, um, you know, trying to make sense of an area to students or to policymakers, right, who often, um, you know, need in very short papers with in bullet points, you know, point it main up. points, right, and they, and they um, don't have time for the stories and the complexities. Um, and then, um, so I think that's, that's difficult, and I agree with Max, like, it's very important to you know, to take very seriously not just the local scholarship, but also to contribute to the local dialogue about these particular issues. I know that, um, you know, Bob's been very influential in kind of bringing together the academic communities who are working on common problems, whether it be history um, issues or issues of, of local governance. Um, and I want to emphasize that, that in one of the more troubling things to me is that a lot of our funding is often restricted to, you know, it comes eventually, you know, or ultimately from the U.S. government and is focused, you know, you, you can't spend money on the, on the people over there. So when you say, oh, I'd love to hear your, you know, your input and to have your cooperation on this project, but I can't in any way reimburse you or um, I find that really troubling and I think it kind of increases the dilemmas that that um, we face in um, working as you know colleagues um, and partners together with um, um, local scholars and you know one of the things I have heard about is kind of the politicization of some continuing you know of the main scholarly bodies within our, our communities um, and you know there's politicization in the, in the US as well but I do think um, one way that I'm I'm trying to engage local scholars is people who who do work kind of independently with think tanks and I think there are more there are a lot more opportunities now to do that there are more more groups of individuals who are, are thinking independently and doing really interesting work and uh, lots of opportunities for partnership and collaboration. Patient here, your presentations, and uh, we hope that this is just the beginning of our collaboration. Thank, Thank you. you.